Augie and Me, the shingling chapter. How our Venn diagrams look. I know. I spend too much time thinking about this stuff. Got Charlotte and Zima and Summer. They all care about what other kids think about them. They love Le Miz, shingling, loves dogs on the honor roll. All that good stuff. How we never talked about it. On Monday, there was no mention of the sleepover. It's like the three of us knew instinctively, without having to say it out loud, that when we got back to school, everything would return to business as usual. Zima hanging out with the Savannah group, Summer hanging out with her tiny group, me playing dots with Maya at my lunch table. No one would have ever guessed that Summer, Zima, and I had become good friends, or that just a few days before, we were having silent pillow fights and sharing secrets under the pink glow of the red chili lights in Zima's bedroom. How I failed to prevent a social catastrophe. The night before the gala, Mrs. Antanabe told us to take the day off and get some rest. She wanted us to make sure we had a nice, healthy dinner and a good night's sleep. Then she gave us our costumes, which she had somehow managed to sew herself. We had already tried them on the week before, but I was so excited to come home and try mine on again that it had to be fitted. This costume was inspired by this photo of the Liberty Bells. So that afternoon, I went home from school with Maya and Lena, the way we used to go in the old days before I started hanging out with Summer and Zima all the time. It was one of the first nice days in March when you finally get a hint of spring after the long, crazy cold winter. Lena had the brainstorm to stop at the caravel on our way home, which felt like a very springtime thing to do. So we walked in the opposite direction up Amesford towards the park. As we were walking, I told them how I'd heard Savannah was telling people that the only reason I was that I got a part in Mrs. Antanaby's dance show was because I had been in a TV commercial when I was little. No one believes that, Lena said sympathetically, kicking her soccer ball in front of her. That's awful, said Maya, and it kind of made me happy that she got mad about it. I can't believe Savannah. She used to be so nice in lower school. Savannah was never really nice to me, I answered. She was nice to me, Maya insisted, pushing her glasses up her nose. Now she's evil. The whole group is evil. I nodded. Then I shook my head. Well, I don't know about that. And now they've turned Ellie against us, Maya said. You know, Ellie barely says hello to me anymore. Now she's evil too. I scratched my nose. Maya had a way of being very black and white about things. I guess. I'm telling you, it's Zima Chin's fault, Maya continued. It's only because of her. If she hadn't started this year, everything would have been the same as it was. She's the bad influence. I knew that was how Maya saw things. It was one of the reasons I never went into too much detail about the dance show I was in. She never really got it that it was just me, Summer, and the dreaded Zima Chin. And that was fine by me. I didn't want to have to defend my friendship with Zima to Maya. I honestly don't think she would have understood. You know what I hate the most, Maya said? I hate that she's probably going to end up giving the fifth grade commencement speech at graduation this year. Well, she does have the best grades of anyone, I answered, trying to sound as impartial as possible. I thought you had the best grades, Charlotte, Lena said to me. No, Zima does, Maya interjected. She started counting off her, on her fingers. Zima, Charlotte, Simon, me, and then Augie or Remo. Augie's actually got better grades than Remo in math, but he didn't do that well in Spanish on his last few quizzes, and that's bringing down his whole grade point average. Maya always knew what everyone else got on their tests. She kept tabs on homework assignments, essay scores, you name it. If it had a grade attached to it, Maya would ask you about it. And she had an amazing way of remembering all those details, too. It's crazy how you can remember everybody's grades, said Lena. It's a gift, answered Maya, not even meaning to be funny. Hey, did you tell Charlotte about the note? Lena asked her. What note, I said. Like I mentioned, I was a little out of the loop with these guys, 
because I hadn't hung around them that much these last few days. Oh, nothing, said Maya. She wrote Ellie a note, said Lena. Maya looked up at me and frowned, telling her how I feel, she added, peering at me over the rims of her glasses. I immediately had a sinking feeling about this note. What did you write, I asked. She shrugged. Just a note. Lena nudged her. Let her read it. She's going to tell me not to give it to her, Maya announced, biting the end of her long curly hair. At least show it to me, I said, now really curious. Come on, Maya. We had stopped at the intersection of Amesford and 222nd Street to wait for the light to change. Fine, Maya answered. I'll show you. She started digging into her coat pocket and pulled out a well-worn, ugly doll envelope with the word Ellie written on it on the outside in silver marker. Okay, so basically, I just wanted to let Ellie know how I feel about the way she's changed this year. She passed the envelope to me and then nodded for me to open it and read the note inside. Dear Ellie, I am writing this as one of your oldest friends to tell you that you've really been acting different lately, and I hope you snap out of it. I don't blame you. I blame it on the evil Zima Chin, who is negatively influencing you. First, she twisted Savannah's brain, and now she's turning you into a pretty zombie, just like she is. I hope you stop being friends with her and remember all the good times we used to have. Remember Mr. Brown's November precept. Have no friends equal to yourself. Can we please be friends again? Your former really good friend, Maya. I folded up the note and put it back inside the envelope. She was looking at me expectantly. Is it stupid? She asked me. I handed the envelope back to her. No, it's not stupid, I answered. But as your friend, I'm telling you that I don't think you should give it to her. I knew you would try to talk me out of it, she said, annoyed and disappointed by my reaction. No, I'm not trying to talk you out of it, I said. You should give it to her if you really want to. I mean, you mean well, Maya. I'm not trying to mean well, she said angrily. I'm just trying to be truthful. I know, I said. By now we had crossed the street and arrived at the caravel, only to see how super busy it was inside. The line at the counter went all the way back to the door, and every single table was full, mostly with Beecher prep kids. Everyone had the same idea as we did, Lena said regretfully. It's too crowded, I said. Let's forget it. Maya gripped my arm. Look, there's Ellie, she said. I followed her gaze and saw Ellie sitting with Zima, Savannah, and Gretchen, plus Miles, Henry, and Amos, at a table in front of the birthday cake counter, which was all the way on the other side of the shop. Let's just go, I said, pulling Maya by the arm. Lena had already started kicking the ball down the block, but Maya stayed right where she was. I'm going to give her my note, she said slowly, her expression very serious. She held the note I had just returned to her in her left hand, and now she waved it like a tiny flag. Oh, no, you're not, I said quickly, pushing her hand down. Not now, at least. Why not? Lena came back towards us. Wait, you want to give her the note now, she said, in front of everybody? Yes, Maya answered stubbornly. No, I said, closing my hand over the note. I could think of what a what is what a big fool she would make of herself if she did that. Ellie would open the note in front of everyone at her table and they would get so mad at Ellie for the things that she said about Zima and Savannah. Unforgivable things, really. But even worse, they would totally start laughing at her about this. This is the kind of thing you would never live down, Maya, I cautioned. You will absolutely regret it. Don't do this. I could tell she was reconsidering. Her, for her forehead was all scrunched up. You would give it to her some other time, I continued, tugging on her coat sleeve the way that Summer sometimes tugged on mine when she was talking. When she's alone, you could even send it to her in the mail if you wanted to. But do not do it now in front of everyone. I'm begging you. Believe me, Maya, that would be a social catastrophe. I saw her rubbing her face. The thing with Maya is, is she's never cared about popularity or social catastrophes. She's so good at keeping tabs on people's test scores and grades, but she doesn't have a clue how to read the social stuff. She gets the basics, of course, 
but in her black and white world, kids are either nice or evil. There's no in between. In some ways, there's been one of the nicest things about her. She'll go up to anyone and just assume they're friends. Or she'll do something really nice for someone out of the blue, like giving Augie Pullman an ugly doll keychain, which she did just last week. But in some ways, it's really bad because she has no defenses ready for when people aren't nice to her. She has no good comebacks. She just takes it all seriously. What's worse, though, is that she doesn't always get when people don't feel like talking to her. She'll just keep chattering on or asking questions until the person walks away. It was Ellie who actually put it kind of perfectly a few months ago when we were griping about how Maya could be sometimes. Maya makes it easy for people to be mean to her. And now Maya was about to make it really easy for Ellie to be mean to her in front of a whole bunch of ice cream eating kids. Because despite my words, despite my basically begging her not to do this, Maya Markowitz walked into the store, wove her way in and out of the crowd of people waiting in line and marched to the back table where Ellie and that whole group of mighty girls were sitting. Lena and I watched from the sidewalk outside of the caravel. There was a floor-to-ceiling window in the storefront, which was the perfect place to see the events unfold. For a second, it felt like I was looking at one of those nature shows on PBS. I could almost hear a man with a British accent narrating the action. Observe what happens as the young gazelle, which has just strayed from its herd. I watched Maya say something to Ellie and how everyone at the table stopped talking and looked up at Maya. Comes to the attention of the lions, who haven't eaten in several days. I saw her hand the envelope to Ellie, who seemed a bit confused. I can't watch, said Lena, closing her eyes. And now the lions, hungry for fresh meat, begin the hunt. How I stayed neutral, again. Pretty much everything I had predicted would happen, happened as I predicted. After giving Ellie the note in front of everyone at the table, Maya turned around and started walking away. Ellie and the Savannah group exchanged laughing looks, and before Maya had even reached the next table, Savannah, Zima, and Gretchen got out of their chairs to huddle around Ellie as she opened the envelope. I could see their faces clearly as they read the note. Zima gasped at one point, while Savannah obviously thought it was hilarious. Maya kept walking across the room towards the exit, looking at me and Lena as she walked. Believe it or not, she was smiling at us. I could tell she was actually very happy. From her point of view, she was getting something off her chest that had really been bothering her. And since she didn't give a hoot about what the popular group thought about her, she didn't see herself as having anything to lose. The truth is, Maya was beyond being able to hurt her. It was only Ellie she was mad at, because Ellie had been her friend. But Maya really didn't care what those other girls thought about her, or that they might be laughing at her at this very moment. In a way, I have to admit, I admired Maya's bravery. Having said that, I knew the last thing in the world I wanted right now was to be seen with her. So I started walking away from the window before she got back outside. I especially didn't want Zima to see me there, waiting for Maya outside. I didn't want anyone to think I had anything to do with this kind of craziness. Just like I had managed to stay neutral in the war among the boys, I wanted to stay neutral in what might have turned into a war among the girls.